Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. There aren't many software companies whose influence on electronic music is comparable to iconic hardware brands like Roland and Korg. Native Instruments is certainly one of them. They defined the industry standard for sampling, established in the box modular synthesis and made using FM much too easy. But today we are going to talk about Massive, putting this 2006 wavetable soft synth and primary ghostwriter of the first three Skrillex EPs on the show is quite literally long overdue, as after the usual venture capitalist foster cluck and discontinuation of Absinthe, it can only be a matter of months until this classic plugin stops working properly on contemporary computers. At the first glance, zero year software UIs are still ticking all the boxes. The overwhelming abundance of controls. numerous tabs for modulators and patch settings are mitigated by a preset browser and the 8 macro controls that saved my behind in the days before I was able to program an actual sim. The architecture of Massive is comparably conventional, in contrast to its more modern competitors, the small set of wavetables is not expandable but VA staples, hyper-digital EDM style crimes and smooth chords can be loaded into three oscillator slots which are accompanied by a nicely tweakable noise generator and a modulation oscillator for ring modulation and all kinds of other shenanigans. A freely routable feedback parameter is great for bringing the synth out of its comfort zone. These raw tones hit a dual filter section allowing for serial and parallel processing with flavors ranging from vanilla to French and acidic. Massive is the OG bro step synth for a reason. In addition to the four complex and loopable envelopes I've yet to fully understand. There are four modulators which can be set to super deep LFO or two sequencer-like modes for relentless warps and wobbles. They can be used for real music too. Assigning them to parameters works like a charm. Just drag and drop one of the crosshairs to whatever you want to modulate, dial in intensity and modulate the modulation with a side chain functionality. The aforementioned patch settings tabs offer more than first meets the eye. An internal oscillator envelope, oscillator phase adjustment, vibrato, complex key tracking of both filters and oscillators, tweaking of unison parameters and useful randomization features. Nice, a set of bread and butter effects is well implemented and the two insert effects let you add a range of nasty sound destruction algorithms to the signal flow. In case you want to make your creations more easily accessible to others or your future self, macros can be easily assigned. And MIDI implementation is more than usable. After almost 20 years, the maximum polyphony count of 64 still manages to keep modern computers busy, especially with the ultra oversampling mode engaged. Massive is somewhat costly on its own, it's part of all complete packages because they're, you know, supposed to be complete and although I've been using NI stuff for decades, I never felt the need to get its successor Massive X. Together with Silent One and 
and Zero Massive forms the unholy trinity of synth plugins that had an actual impact on 21st century electronic music. Is it a timeless classic or just the trendy tool of yesteryear? You have already heard Massive in today's intro tune. I like the smell of digital waveforms in the morning. Time to find out how it fares in an otherwise analog jam environment. That's a pretty ok digital approximation of a classic Moog bass and more than acceptable for an ancient wavetable plugin. It's highly tweakable and the sweet spots are wide. Massive is oftentimes associated with 2010's bass music genres that didn't age so well. Let's get it over with and use the synth for all sounds including drums. <laughs> wasn't as bad as I expected. Sure, the sample oscillator of Serum would have come in handy for the drums, but you can make massive work for all parts of an arrangement and some of the presets have become legendary in their own right. I wanna know how far we can push the digital tabra of the plugin in this wonderfully depraved meme psi automaton wavetable cruelty. <laughs> Massive is one of my favorite synths for the same reason other people enjoy instruments like the JP8000 or an early Nord. I've put in an unfathomable number of hours over the decades it has been, for better or worse, used on countless records that were actually released and it still gets the job done. However, just like the aforementioned hardware classics, it has a very distinct sound that is hard to maneuver around and it can't hold a candle to the pristine sound quality and rich set of features you will get from today's plug-in powerhouses or even similarly vintage software. Hopefully and I won't mess with Massive in the same way as they did with AppSynth, but at least it would give me an excuse to get an ancient Apple G5 and install my old backup copies that got it all started. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and welcome to the monthly Vokoda shoutouts. As I have failed miserably to get the Vokoda setup going with my outdated NI complete, I am looking forward to using the overtone rich sound of Lyra 8 as a carrier signal. Tier 4. 3D6 
Tier 6 BMJ Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. See you next month.